years ago. Last year we gathered at the state park, uh, COVID, just to kind of get everybody together. And I've been looking at some of the dates and what works for me probably as good as any would be something right after church like we did um, a couple of years ago. I looked at the calendar. I looked at it again in the office before I walked out here. And as I look across at what's coming up with, with Vacation Bible School, Fourth of July weekend, I just pulled July 11th out of the, off, the, off the thing. So we'll see what uh, it comes. Uh, what I'd like to do is meet on top of the mountain, the tall Mount Pisgah, uh, one of my favorite spots. And we'll walk across the, the ridge uh, to a place called the Cobble, uh, where they used to grow potatoes for the hotel. And uh, it's not too far to walk. It's, it's, it's not too bad to walk. Jackie remembers one of those walks. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Balance Rocks, Never just <laughs> and Balance Rock is just below if you're so inclined. Uh, that's just off the side. But if this works for a good group of you, um, let me know. Let Tammy know. Text her. If it doesn't work for uh, you know at all, we can do something different at another time. Uh, and of course, weather has a big factor in it. But we'll just kind of float that out there. But that would be July 11th, right after. The church service, as soon as you make it to the top, you bring whatever you want to eat for whatever you call lunch. And, and after we get done with that, we just take that hike. And I try to fit it all in before it's time to go and gather up the cows for milk and so. And I'm not too far from that. Um, the, the 21st of July, um, and we, we still have our uh, CBS, our Campfire Bible Study, coming up at uh, <clears throat> Lizzie's in June. But July 21st, there's another one scheduled. And these are on Wednesdays, if you check your calendar. And uh, Gail uh, Merkin has volunteered for that one. But try to have one in August, uh, <clears throat> and maybe one in September. We'll think about that, too. But these are different than Jeff's classes. They're just a time to gather up around a campfire and share a little about the Word of God and, and some smiles and, and, and some accounts and stories about what the Bible is all about. And just suck in some good, fresh Bradford County air. So, yep. Just wanted to put those out for you. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, if you are involved in any way with VBS uh, this coming week, I'd like to have you start on that in. I want to have you line up across and face the congregation, okay? We're going to have a word of prayer. And you'll see why this is so really important when I get done with the message this morning. But if you're a teacher, if you make cookies, if you help in any way, I'd like to invite you to come forward and, uh, and face the congregation. We're going to have a word of prayer, okay? Um, we're going to do that. And Jeff, I'd like to invite you to come forward and join me uh, and assist me in, in our prayer time. Um, and I know, Robin, you have to come forward. Uh, Wade, you would be invited if, if your youngster wants to come up and, and you can help uh, Jeff and I in our prayer time. Um, just have to be aware of the equipment yet yeah, here. What's that? Sure. If any kids would like to come up, there won't be anybody to look at you after a while. <laughs> you are invited to come up, okay? Yes, sir. BBS in the community uh, this year for the first time since 2019, due to the obvious, uh, we don't even want to talk about COVID-19. We're back in, in gear again. Um, we have... Uh, just a tremendous uh, uh, staff here that I've never seen the likes of, uh, and, and in a good way I say that, um, uh, because <laughs> it's at night this year, and it changes the game for many who work uh, out uh, during the daytime, and they're planning, and they're working, and they're decorating their rooms, and I just want the rest of you out there to know, and certainly to spread the news to others in the community that we need to pray, okay? And we're going to read about uh, our adversary, and I've got a, uh, a cattle rope up here. Some of you saw me coming in, and uh, no, there wasn't going to be a hanging because we didn't see him gathered by the river. Um, but uh, um, I just want you to know that this VBS was on for uh, five nights, and the closing is on Saturday night uh, coming up. A lot of lives can be changed in VBS, and the cooperative effort that I've seen from our side and certainly the two services we have every year, the Good Friday and the Thanksgiving uh, service uh, helps to fund that, where we work jointly with the Federated folks. Great numbers the last time you gathered, and the numbers have been increasing back through uh, recent years, and I, I expect great things that the Lord will do. 
Uh, but each and every one of you who are helping, okay, as I'm looking at you, uh, God is on you, okay? I mean, you, you, I know what some of you are doing. If you have a job out, I know with Tammy, she'll come home uh, from working in Elmira, and uh, Zach and I won't get supper, but uh, <laughs> she'll have to come over here, and uh, uh, we'll get Hot Sing to make a few biscuits for us. But uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a challenge for each and every one of you. Some hot weather, um, but God will bless in ways that you can't even imagine. Um, Bible school is so important. The only opportunity for some of these folks uh, to be, you know, some parents might consider a place to dump kids for a couple hours for five days. But in the process, they will get a sample of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to have, um, let's see, somebody can be in the center. I'm going to swing around on, the, on that end. Wave, you swing around by your wife on that end. And Jeff would just kind of take the middle here so we kind of, uh, we're going to have uh, all in the congregation bow their heads for a word of prayer. Father, we do praise you again for being able to gather together in your house. Some special things are taking place this week, and you know it. We do pray a special blessing for energy, for strength, for time scheduling, and being able to persevere in, in what they're doing, uh, all the helpers who are working here in the Bible school. We pray that your word would go out, as you promised, and never return void. And wherever it goes, it cuts asunder like a two-edged sword, and, and it makes a difference. We do pray a blessing on the Federated Brothers and Sisters as they participate as well. May the, the force as it comes together be a powerful, powerful pressure against the evil and the negativity that we see in our young people's lives in the world today. Again, we pray that you bless them, keep them, guide them, and give them an acute awareness of who they are and what they are doing and how important it is when, when it concerns matters of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks for coming up, okay? That was that was important. <laughs> Scripture reading today as we continue to roll. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, some of you are familiar with that. If you've been to uh, Jeff's Bible studies, we were here over some time ago, but Daniel is always a great book to read. There's uh, Lots of things in Daniel, but this is just chapter 10. It's not extremely long, but there's some reading here. But it tells of uh, uh, Daniel praying and, and, and the answer he got to prayer, but how he got it and, and the challenges that ensued. In chapter 10 of Daniel, verse 1, if you're reading along with me, um, Pew Bible or yours, or if you're just listening. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was, was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Remember, Daniel was a prophet, so he got direct uh, word from God Almighty about things that were going to happen in the short term and things actually that won't happen and haven't happened yet if you study the Bible in the book of Daniel and how it connects with the book of Revelation. Verse 2. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, I ate no pleasant food, no meat, no wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now this is how dedicated a prayer person this Daniel was. And in order to stay focused in prayer, he had to deny himself a lot of the niceties. Uh, so his focus would be um, with God and what was going on. He needed to know and he wanted to know. And now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris, and you can look that up. That still exists today over there. Uh, you've heard a lot about it in recent times of the wars that have gone on. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of euphos. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sounds of his words like the voice of a multitude. So you know you're dealing with with, with the Almighty here when, when things like that are described in the scriptures. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. 
For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Even though they didn't see what Daniel was seeing, they were well aware that Daniel was in the presence of the Almighty and something great and, and shaking and uh, was taking place. Therefore, I was left alone, verse 8, and I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Always in these scriptures, whenever someone gets a direct contact from God, no matter how big and mighty and powerful physically or whatever they are, they're, they're drained of their strength because of the immense power of God. And yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep, on my face and my face in the, to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble to my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. So he's still, still shaking, physically you know, struck by <clears throat> the immenseness uh, of this almighty presence uh, that he is in. And 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. Now, it's been a long time. He's been waiting for this answer, okay? But the reassurance has been given to him that immediately when he prayed, immediately his words were heard. And sometimes when we're in a prayerful situation, we think, well, God must be out for uh, a little coffee or take a little walk in the woods and miss that one. And, but it's not true, and, and this is evidence of it, an affirmation of it here in, in the book of Daniel. He, from the very first time, your words were heard, and uh, that's why the answer was sent. Thirteen, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Okay, Satan and his hordes, that's the reference here, uh, if you want to translate it. Uh, there's always warring in the heavens. And it took Michael the archangel to intervene in this situation. And all the while, anything to do with God or the gospel is going out. There's, there's the anti-force uh, from Satan always pushing back. And thus the need for prayer here today for our, our warriors in, in VBS. It's the same principle as what we're trying to pull out of these, these words here. And now I have come to make you understand what will happen to you people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. And 15, and when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. Again, you can be the uh, most articulate person in the world and have you know, a great orator, whatever, well-educated, but when God speaks, that's it. You, you, you're without words. And no different for uh, Daniel here, even as uh, high and, and, and famous or whatever you want to call it, he was 16, and suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men, touched my lips, then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. And a lot of these things that he's seen, we can't really deal with today because they refer uh, to the end times as well. Where in 17, For how can his servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is there any breath left in me. Still the description of being physically drained and stricken and breathless, uh, speechless. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. So you see the change here. There's power there. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Whatever happens when you're in the presence of the Almighty, and some have said, well, how am I going to know? One thing you know is when the time comes, when it all settles out even, you're going to feel a certain peace that you don't feel when, when evil is present or when Satan is present. Peace be to you, be strong. Yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for you have strengthened me. In the last two verses here. Then he said, do you know why I've come to you and now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia when I have gone forth? Indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. So I'm going to stop there because there's so much to read, so much interpretation that you could get out of these. But this is the word of the Lord. And again, shall we have a word of prayer? <clears throat> the Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your precious word. And as we gather here again to look at it, we know your Holy Spirit makes it real to us. 
Help us to open our hearts and our minds and our soul to you and feel the power of your presence as you speak today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I brought... Uh, Sometimes kids, though, and even older kids, you know, will look more when you bring a, something for an object lesson. Um, the other day, along the Wetona Road, a, a fellow who's about my age, we just happened to talk about uh, Bible school and how we taught uh, youth Bible school, ages from about 14 to 18. Believe it or not, we could get... Uh, 20 or so out uh, from the churches that were around at that time. And so Bible school was not unfamiliar to me. Only I did the older ones as a general rule. I didn't do the little ones. And, and I watch how the family's preparing for this little ones here. And, and it's, a lot, it's a challenge. But as we uh, talked, we remembered the day. And uh, it was always hay. Always hay to, to do that week, it seems. And I'll take you back to a saying my grandmother always had. She said, you're never too busy to go to church, and you're never too busy to study the Bible or pray. And I carried that into Bible school those few years, and probably did it five or six years, before they kind of got, they grew out of it, and that group moved on, and um, but you're never too busy for that, because it's easy to say, well, I'm going to be doing a ton of hay, and we did. I can remember one time, uh, it was just the most beautiful hay whether you could possibly imagine. Kind of like one day we had here a while back. It was just wall to wall sunshine from the minute the sun popped over the hill to the minute the sun. I think um, my dad might have round bailed, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred and some bales that day, which is pretty good for that old thing we had then. Um, but we made it to Bible school. And we did. It was at night. One time we were in having a lesson and they, somebody came in the door and said, all 22 of your heifers broke through the fence and you're headed for Smithville. <laughs> well, we got them. Took two days to get them. <laughs> Some good neighbors with tracking skills, but we got them. But I just wanted you to think about the devil says, and Paul describes him as such, that he runs around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Okay? Now, I've heard it said, and I've read it, I don't know, I've never had a lion growl at me in the woods. <laughs> so, but they say you can hear on a clear day, in a calm day, you can hear a lion growl, a, a male lion for up to five miles. Could be. Maybe someday I'll know. I, I, I don't know. But a lion protects when he wants to kill. Until it comes time to kill. Ever watch the little cat catch a mouse or a chipmunk or something? They'll bat it around and they'll try to run and try to get away and they'll keep batting it around and, and they'll, they'll be fine inside whenever they decide to pounce on it and kill it. Good fathers, I keep playing with this rope, nothing else, you're watching it. <laughs> I'm not going to throw it out, try to last year. I tried that once and that didn't work. So I hopped on the back of the four wheeler and Zachary gassed it and I jumped on the calf instead. He never forgot that. Asked me to do that today and might not end quite so well. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I did actually land on the calf. But I want you to think about good dads, dads that aren't so good. And we're not here to define that or even set any uh, rules or regulations for that because we know what the scripture says. Okay? And I'm moving a little bit, Gail, so yeah, I'm just let the camera be. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But I want you to think if you're a dad, okay, and this is a cow rope, a homemade one with a homemade halter, and you just adjust it, and that's really what it is, but um, we use them a lot lately trying to catch things. And, but I want you to imagine your child as a dad, or a grandpa, or a great grandpa for that matter, has gone over the edge of a cliff, okay, and is hanging on for dear life. What kind of a dad would you be if you didn't? You know, lower the rope down. Try at least to tie it around something and try to help that son or grandson back up over the side to rescue. Okay? Or maybe they fell fallen overboard on a boat here. And so you have a life preserver attached to this thing. I'll get all tangled up in this sports stuff. 
And, and so you throw it over to the side and put it out there and hope that they, they grab it and, and then you can reel them back up on, onto the deck of the ship. What kind of a dad or grandpa or maybe stepdad or whatever would you be if you didn't, uh, if you didn't at least attempt to do that? And I'm going to say that a good, positive desire to save your soul is what a dad should have, okay? I know I had that. I had that with grandparents, granddads and everything. And I praise God for it. Because you never know what direction you might choose to take without the proper influence. Or people who are like a dad to me as I came through. And back to the Bible school that we used to teach. Last year, one of these young gentlemen became a lawyer. And uh, he has his office in Troy, and we had need of one. So we stopped in and uh, to have him help us take care of an issue. And uh, Zach was with me, and we both had to laugh. And he said, uh, Vern, before I go and do this thing, would you, would you pray with me? And uh, he says, I remember VBS when I was a teenager in your class. He said, you changed my life. And many of the things that happened for the good changed that way because of what you and, and Paul had taught us. Even how to win and lose volleyball games. So we prayed. And we didn't go down. He said, Well, you go ahead. We know where you went, and if we don't hear from you. And um, so away he went. But I just never forgot. And I've had others come to me and say, Thank you for your teaching. Thank you for your leading, for your willingness to open the Bible to me as a young person. All kinds of experiences that I've seen. Satan would have all of our young people, all of us for that matter, if he can get them. But Jesus said, I went to the cross to die for your sins and the sins of many and all who will come to me. And I want you to imagine that forgiveness, that gift of grace as this rope, as being a lifeline. The best I can do here today. This is a new one. It doesn't even smell like cows yet. <laughs> You always know when I come into Judson's and want this size rope for a certain length of the cow rope because they get rotten after a while. Satan plays with his prey and he stalks it. Now he prefers the quiet, silent approach, just like cats do if you watch cats. Now I'm going to tell you something funny real quick because I know our time is expiring. Um, don't pay any attention to that clock because that's always 10 minutes fast. Tammy always says, watch that clock, watch that clock. <laughs> but I tend to watch my watch. <laughs> and, but I want you to think about a story that I read many years ago. It was about a British uh, hunter in Africa back in the glory days when there was a lot of imperialism and French and the Dutch and, and the British had these colonists. And well, this guy uh, was hunting um, tigers. Kind of the same thing, cat. But the title of the book was Death in the Long Grass. Well, he had a, a double rifle, which is only two shots, and a gun bearer behind him with another double rifle. And he fired the two shots, and the cat didn't go down. The cat was waiting in the grass, growling, and started to pounce. And he reached back for the gun bearer's rifle. The gun, the gun was a little ways behind him on the ground, and the gun bearer was running back through the, the, the grass. So he rolled on the ground and, as the story goes, laid on his back, pulled the rifle, cocked both hammers when the cat jumped on him. As the barrel was coming close, he fired both shots and the cat died on his top of his chest. Sounds like a good story anyway, but I think it was probably true. Now if you have a lifeline, or like that gun bearer that he had, and you don't provide this, this lifeline, if you, this person's overboard and you say, and going overboard, you know, you just, you, want, you know, it's just, just the way it is. Or if the person's hanging by their fingertips down on the cliff, you don't know anything, do you? I told you not to get too close to the cliff, look what you did, you know? And then you walk back and have a cookie or something and, and uh, continue to scold the individual. No matter where we find ourselves, how bad the sin is, those of us who know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior are called to throw out the lifeline. That's what we do. That's what church is about. That's what ministry is about. And focusing in on Bible school today, that's what DBS is about. Throwing out that lifeline to our young people. 
And in the process, as an older person, as you're teaching and helping and leading, you're gonna learn a lot. I know I did. Even you know how to handle rough situations. We had one night where one young girl was brought down with a hair of her head by her drunken father. Brought her right up in front of me. You straighten her out or I'll kill her. So we diffused that situation as best we could. Uh, one of the ladies went back down and tried to get a hold of Tammy because she was down at the house, but we diffused it. There's a lot of trouble out there today, and the one named Satan would like all your souls, just putting it just as plain as black and white can be. But there is a lifeline, and that lifeline, with the rope being a representative of what's contained in this gospel. That's what church is all about. That's what Bible school is all about. That's why I take the time to come out here on a Sunday morning or do the things that we do as a church. I have tons of things I could do. And I wouldn't have to come here. But God, in my finding, the time that I was young and, and impressionable, somebody continued to throw out the lifeline and continued to reel people in and I watched it and I saw it. But if you don't participate in it, if you're not a soldier of Jesus Christ, if you don't try to Take down the lion, Satan. Prince of power of Persia would tell me, the angel said. But the power of Michael the archangel, through the power of the almighty God, I was able to take him down and, and get through. There's going to be a lot of resistance and pushback in the gospel this week, in whatever way it might be. Maybe you'll get done with work, and it's hot, it's about 90 degrees, I really don't want to go over there and look you with those kids. They better not say anything to me too much that I uh, tell you. You can get that way. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're hungry. Maybe it's not going well with your class. All these things can happen. Satan will push back. All of you that know spiritual things know that. So pray, each and every one of you, even if you're not directly involved. Pray for the class. Pray for the teacher. Pray that the gospel would grow. Then when Saturday night when we have that program, they'll be rejoicing and songs to be sung. I understand some ice cream to be eaten. I'm going to leave you with that. Maybe you'll remember it the next time you see a rope at Tractor Supply or Judson's or something hanging there and you look at that thing and it might just remind you of the lifeline that I threw out at church service on BBS Sunday. God calls you and me. And it may just be you. You think, oh, it couldn't be me. I'm not that good. But sometimes you're the only one, you're the only gospel that those people will see and receive. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do praise you for opportunities here today to be able to, to see what you do, to read your word, to receive witness, to receive power, to know that there are many forces at work that are evil and push against your gospel, but they will not win, they will not succeed. For you have conquered the grave and your, your cross rises high. No matter how much darkness moves in, the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ, will always dispel it. And in the end, you are the winner. You are the victor. And you will take us all the way across the finish line if we follow you. We pray that tonight, or today, that you would bless each and every one as they depart and go their separate ways. That they would focus on the extra spreading of the gospel which will take place this week in this community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Closing him, if you want to take a look, 463 is the place.